Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 30 of Sign of the Dark House, a Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition gothic horror podcast. Since it is gothic horror, there are some things that may cross a line for people, such as talk about trauma, violence, blood, gore, child endangerment, body horror, and the like. If you come across anything that does cross a line for you, please take a break. Your support means a lot to us, but so does your mental health. So when we last left off, you guys left the lab, having gathered all of the information you needed to. You took a quick swing by the chapel where Arthur figured out that he can sense more than the undead now and sensed a very, very, very large presence underneath the house. You then decided it's getting late. You don't have a lot of energy to deal with whatever is in this triptych that you've discovered was a portal. So you decided to spend the night in the library where Arthur had a very interesting meeting with some hags, very familiar hags who revealed quite a lot of very interesting information. When Arthur awoke from the dream, he decided to confront Lark about the information that he had received and thus launched into a very long conversation trying to weasel a deal and figure out where the two were going to go now that they knew very specific information. And we're starting there. After Arthur went back to sleep and Lark took the last watch, the night passed uneventfully. The morning has come and you all have woken up. So with the sun shining as well as it can in the cloudy skies of Gothia coming through the windows of the library, what would you all like to do? Uh, so when Arthur wakes up, the first thing that he is going to do is violently search the library for the smallest speck of liquor that he can find. <laughs> Like, like very noticeably shoving books aside and tearing <laughs> through stuff. Um, investigation check? <laughs> uh, sure. Why not? Let's see what I can find. At this point, uh, as you're like hurling books off of the shelf, Zarloth appears and <laughs> a cloud of black smoke and just goes... <sighs> and just starts <laughs> going back and forth, grabbing books and putting them back on the shelf and just teleporting back and forth, following Arthur around as he's just <laughs> hurling books off of the shelf. And then they <laughs> go back on the shelf as he quickly like tries to put all the books back on. Investigation check? I got an eight. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no liquor here. You are very frustrated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lark's so I, just, I think... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Seeing that happen, Lark kind of just floats over to Percy and goes, I think he had a very bad dream last night. <laughs> He's probably just going to, like, pause and, like, stick his face in his hands, like, oh, God, <laughs> yeah. why? Oh, uh, Percy's going to look... Did you do that? Did you curse him in his dreams or something? Is that you? Oh, darling, I don't have that much power yet. Yeah, and I was just uh, Arthur. Are you are you okay? I no, I'm not okay. I where is the liquor in this goddamn joint? I mean, who can sit through one of these? He just grabs another book and like tosses it. One of this with uh, this is no booze library. whatsoever. You know, drinks here. I guess the booze is not in the. Library. I was saying that while I was like half asleep because I I was like I didn't get enough sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Um, looking looking on the map, Spencer, is there like a wine cellar of some sort? There is a kitchen. Okay, well, we already know the kitchen is, is a... where the bad things are. So, <laughs> yes, so you've heard. Mm. But other than that, there doesn't seem to be any place that would. I mean, there's a few studies that are upstairs. There's the bedrooms that are upstairs. There might be liquor in there 
Oh God! If Maybe, I don't find some whiskey, I might literally die. You don't know. <laughs> Can he not use primeval or <laughs> to find whiskey? That's your that's your preferred enemy. <laughs> I have not taken locate object yet, but <laughs> it's technically an enemy. <laughs> oh God! Would you be able to find whiskey with like? detect poison and disease yes it's an i would i would rule that you can i actually it is I, a poison i actually did that in a campaign that i played in i stood outside of a bunch of bars in town and did detect poison and whichever one gave me the largest ping we went in oh my god that's wow. amazing <laughs> i need that best use of the I spell unfortunately do not yeah. have a detect poison prepared for today Take um, note. Uh, Take note. well then what good are you <laughs> and technically, detect poison and disease tells you exactly what type of poison or disease. So it would tell you what alcohol it is. That's fantastic. And what quantity. I'm going to need to take that. I'm going to need to take that. <laughs> it is such a good spell. Um, no, I guess so. Arthur, just like frustrated that he can't find any booze, just like <sighs> I had some really interesting dreams last night and i am not handling it very well so my apologies um do you want to talk about it uh no not in particular but i don't feel that i have very many options because apparently if i don't make good on the favor that i owe these lovely hags who visited me last night. Um, I may literally die. So, yeah, I just, I mean, it's really no big deal. Like, all I have to do is kind of, like, you know, waltz into the castle of one of the rulers of the Feywild and just, like, take our rose from her garden. Like, it's no big deal. Not technically not a ruler, just one of the Archfey who serves one of the two rulers. No, oh, yeah, right. It, that exactly, all. and that being that other lady that Lark apparently serves, I was still half asleep while I was saying that. <laughs> um, I think Lark's Arthur's just kind of, kind of like snaps uh... over towards Rarick. Uh... <laughs> so you, you, you have to get. What was it? You have to get something for the hags. Uh, yes, yes, a blue rose from the garden of Gloriana. The above game princess, was it something like that? Um, I, 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 daughter I, of Titania, yes. Daughter of Titania, yes. The daughter of Titania. Um, so, Lark, do you, do you know this princess? Perhaps we could just ask her. <laughs> Arthur's just going to laugh along with him. Just like, <laughs> oh, oh, Percy, God. darling. She's just royal here. Now she has to be diplomatic. We can appeal to her better nature. Darling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Percy knows nothing <laughs> about the fate. <Fae>, so <laughs> Gloriana <sighs> is the daughter of Titania, the queen of the summer court, the Seely court, the kindly folk. That sounds lovely. I don't travel in those same social circles, darling, at all. As is, if Arthur's still cackling, as Arthur <laughs> <He's> probably <stopped> is <laughs> from our friendly hags last night, I serve the unsealed court. Which, which is <laughs> not that? Uh, no. No. <laughs> Darling, no. It's the winter court. It exists in opposition to the summer court. The summer court is closer to the image that Drindhal would sell people over at Fairy Godmothers. Think about mm -hmm. the exact opposite of that. Like denim? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Denim. <laughs> Wait, did he say denim? He said denim. 
I don't think denim exists at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Or okay, if anything, linen, it's whichever. like a brand new fabric that like, <laughs> nobody really knows what to do with. We're like khaki. We have khaki. <laughs> mm. Maybe nothing. Opposite of clothes. Oh my god. Muslin. I'm, I'm euphemistically denim, yes. <laughs> <laughs> or perhaps mail. chain mail. A, a set of leather chaps. That could work too. So, oh, what are, so you, are you? Are the two queens at a war or something? Do they? Is there a reason why would, would, she was to kill you on sight? I mean, they might. Awesome. What did you do? What? What? what Where? Did... God's name is the booze. And I'm like, you clearly do a lot more healing than reading. Um, can I hope. we? Um... <gasps> I, I, I Sorry, read that was totally the, the, the scriptures forward and back. I will have you know. <laughs> okay. Who cares about scriptures? Read about history <laughs> and all that. Well, I mean, first, first I was visibly like... taken aback at, at saying scriptures are not history. <laughs> like... Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. So yeah, at any rate, um, so once we, you know, prevent global destruction and whatnot, um, I've got some hags on my shit list and I am on the shit list of some other hags. So the women good in our life. Well, 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 look, you can just, it'd be something we, we, could, we could do to, to get this rose, just a rose. It's a rose in the palace of one of the most powerful Seely Archfey, born directly from the womb of the Queen of Summer. It's going and to none be none of that is here. Well, when you put it like that, it sounds plan. harder. I mean, I'm, I'm a little tickled at the idea of. I don't know if any other Unseely have ever managed to break into Gloriana's garden, and I come from a garden. It could be quite the adventure. We're just nowhere near where we need to be to pull that off. I think. And then I just go and nudge Arthur, and I'm like, why are you so worried about Percy finding out whatever Lark's secret is? Well, he, he well Percy doesn't know, doesn't know that Lark is evil. He doesn't know that he's, he's not silly. <laughs> Evil's relative, right? <laughs> I mean, global destruction, whatever it is that Lark's doing. <laughs> I... Let me put it this way, darlings, and this goes for Seely, Unseely, or any of the non-affiliated Fae. I'm, well, I'm also just trapped here, but if the material plane falls, the Fae Wild's not going to fare much better with how often the two intersect. It's in everyone's best interests we sort out whatever, whatever's happening here, and I'll lend Arthur some aid when he has to go to the Fae Wild, because yet again, could earn me some brownie points with the higher-ups, too, if I could pull a caper over some of the Seely Arch Bay as it is. And let's hope that the hags have been exercising their patience, because I do not imagine that that will be an undertaking accomplished anytime soon. Did they give you a time frame? They did not, thankfully. Yeah, time flows differently for our kind than yours, generally speaking, so... They might not remember to check on you for a hundred years. Well, that's comforting. Well, I mean, uh, they may uh, probably in a few <laughs> months is what I'd wager with things that are coming up and goings on. Okay, well, I felt better for about 1.7 seconds and now I don't. So, <laughs> yeah. Good morning, everyone. Right. Uh, well, that's something to think about, uh, I guess. How do we want to handle... Do we want to head back to the triptych, or should we leave that for another time? Oh, we may as well. I mean, I've all but signed my death warrant anyway, so... <laughs> 
if it's at the hands of whatever's in there, I imagine it will be a hundred times more pleasant than whatever suffering the hags have planned for me. Um, well, we've already got one phylactery. This, maybe this is, this is two, two down. If it's even in there. We can presume based on... I mean, let's... Percy's family hasn't exactly shown much in terms of variance or originality so far. Now, um, what did you tell me about assuming things? Very true. Right. <laughs> so... With one phylactery destroyed, will the ritual still be... Like, I'm quite, I'm asking you, Spencer. Mm -hmm. Will like, will the ritual still be like, go on with one phylactery destroyed? Yeah. Um, the the phylactery just make it harder to kill the lich. Um, the liches are still doing stuff. <laughs> yeah, the liches are still alive when you destroy their phylactery. They just mm -hmm. wouldn't be summoned in the place into the house. You don't know if that ritual has been completed or not. That was just to summon them, and that doesn't bind them, it doesn't force them to do anything. They would just be summoned, right? For an we audience. have no idea whether that was even completed or if it was what happened when it was, right? Mm. And that's not to say that they can't be summoned again without their phylacteries. You would just probably, knowing magical rituals, you would probably need something in their stead, but it's not unfeasible or impossible. Ooh. Okay. I'm just curious. All right, um, so back to Back to the chapel, then. Yes, yes. The unbearably dry chapel. Like their books. I'm sorry, what now? Like their books. Yes, yes, like their books. So you head back to the chapel to find it is left as it was before. So, Rarik, you, you said we have to ignite the censer and then approach the altar? Yes. Yes. From the door down the aisle, specifically. Understood. Uh, I, would, I mean, Percy has, I think, an acolytes pack or something. I would imagine there's like incense in there or something. But the priest's um, pack? The priest's pack, yes. Yeah, um, that, that has like a one pound block of incense or something. Probably. Um, <laughs> so I had uh, it with one of my characters. So. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll take out some incense and uh, say say a prayer to Saint Hypatia for her protection as I as I place it in. Are we oh, ready? For the love of. I... Well, yeah. I mean, thanks Saint Hypatia that you prayed for us. Now we're ready. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'll, I'll ignite it. Head back the door. So as you're walking down the aisle, swinging the, the sensor back and forth, the smoke comes out even thicker than you were expecting. The smoke fills the room and the light begins to fade. The incense uh -oh. mingles with the smell of fields and forest. You hear twittering birds and insects as you all find yourselves in a forest. The trees are very close together, the branches woven together almost in an arch. And in front of you is a brightly lit road a dirt road with a field on either side, a pleasant, bucolic, sunny 
scene. The trees around you, the canopy is so thick that it's dark. You see nothing behind you. Even with your dark vision, you see nothing behind you. And you assume this might be the edge of the demiplane. Walking out onto the road, you see a sign pointing down the road towards what appears to be a lovely village. And the sign reads, Tiffany's. Uh, can you spell that? <laughs> uh, T-I-P-P-E-N-E-S, Tiffany's. Um, can we make like a, a history check or something on that? <laughs> um, I can confidently say Your you've manage. never heard of this place. Wonderful. Oh. And <laughs> even if you did, it's not Gothian. You, you would know from checking up on St. Pelias, he was Caliburnian. Um, and this is definitely not Gothia. The grass is a lovely rich green. The fields are full of golden wheat. The sky is crystal blue with light, white, fluffy clouds floating across them. If anything, this is Caliburn. But you're also aware this is a demiplane. There is an edge. You can, there is a limit to how far this goes. And there's probably a lot of magic involved in making this as perfectly beautifully bucolic as possible. Um, a change compared to the last one of these we wandered into? Mm. A bit no unsettling if you ask me. We can see the village from here. Are there people yes. in the village? Um, it's a bit far away to tell. You can only make out the buildings. Okay. Primeval awareness? Um, undead and aberrations. Um, no undead, no aberrations. Lovely. <clears throat> well, uh, my stomach seems to be fine. I don't smell anything funny. So, so far as I can tell, it's fairly safe. As far as whatever we might find in a demiplane goes. Oh... Uh... Go. I mind a meat puppeting another mortal, I might vomit this time. <laughs> I'm sorry, say that again. Lark's just gonna as as the group drifts closer, thinking back to the um time that we went into the other one, he's just yeah. like, if I wind up meat puppeting another mortal, I'm going to vomit. <laughs> okay. Just aim it wonderful for anywhere else. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, probably about maybe half a mile to the village itself. It's a bit of a walk, but it's a nice, lovely day. It, it seems like a spring day. There's a nice, cool breeze, but it's not chilly outside. It's fairly nice. As you walk, you see there are fields with sheep. There are... Um, also people that you can see that are kind of guiding the sheep here and there. There are goats and pigs and cows. It seems like a farming village of some kind. And as you get closer and closer, it's definitely a lot cleaner than many of the villages that you've visited. There's no shit in the sidewalk or on the dirt road, it, it seems relatively clean. Every house is seemingly perfect. There's flowers in the flower boxes. There's garlands strung over the streets. It seems like almost a parody in a way of the perfect bucolic village. Perfect little cottages, perfect little festivals, perfect little baked goods and cheese wheels and all kinds of other things that you see as you come into this village. There are people selling wheels of cheese. There are people selling wool. 
There are people selling freshly butchered bacon. There's people selling, you know, baked pies and all kinds of other things. It's almost stereotypical. It's a wait a minute. There's pie. Village. Yeah, there's <laughs> pie. There's I all kinds of pie. pie. I would love pie. <laughs> I had no breakfast. Yeah, you go up to this um, kind of definitely a grandmotherly figure at with a cart going fresh pies I just baked this morning. Anyone want one? Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yes, there are only three copper. Oh, lovely. I'll take two. Oh, wonderful. Any particular kind? Um, I'm partial to apple. Oh, yes, that's, that's my specialty. And she brings out these nice, almost perfect pies. They, you look at them and for a moment, they look perfect. And then you start seeing the little imperfections, the sort of imperfections that make it human. It's not perfect. Oh. It was made by human hands. But they smell delicious. Just the right amount of cinnamon, just the right temperature. The apples aren't quite as soft. They have a little bit of resistance to them, but they are still baked to a lovely golden brown. They are perfect. Oh, nearly thank so. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You have oh, no idea how hungry I was. Um, we're, uh, we're not from around here, and Arthur's going to very rudely begin shoving pie in his mouth as he continues to speak. Um, can you tell us anything about your lovely village? Oh, yes, we've, we've been here quite a while, and we have a lovely tradition of sheep herding. Of course, and also pies. Fascinating. Um, and the, uh, wh where are we exactly? Um, we we kind of got a bit lost on, on the way and just, well, I smelled the pies coming up the road. I couldn't resist. Oh, well, you know, we're, we're all here and there. You're in Tiffany's, of course. I'm sure you saw the sign on the road. Mm. Right. I, uh, I must have missed that in the excitement. Well, um, th thank you so, so much for the lovely breakfast. Of course. In, and she continues pushing her cart along. Pies, only two copper. She's pushing it along. Um, well, Mark's just going to look over towards Arthur to see if he's like poisoned or. Yeah. <laughs> Can Percy make a medicine check? <laughs> yeah, Percy can make a medicine check. Um, I mean, it's not uh, booze, but it'll do for now. 17. I mean, he shows symptoms of having eaten an apple pie. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, seems all right. Um, not what I was expecting in uh, the demi plane of uh, Fallen Saint. I mean, you guys should have got one while she was here. <laughs> Can I check if the pie has magic on it? No. But, well, there is no immediate effects. You can check if the one I didn't eat yet has magic on it. <laughs> no, never mind. If there's magic on it, you would have already been affected. Most likely. Um, so I'm we're going to start eating the second pie. We're in the town now, right? Yes. Um, perception check for notable features <laughs> uh sure make me a perception check oh perceive this pie oh my god <laughs> that's gonna be a 23 um yeah so as you look around once again the kind of unnatural perfection of this place is pervasive. There doesn't seem to be a thing out of place. 
everything is moving how it should be. It's like a storybook. You also notice there is a big church at the end of the road, separated from the village a little bit with a little bit of a path that goes up through um, a little garden that's set up, but it is a church. Although you can't see what it's dedicated to from the outside. But it does seem to be dedicated to a saint. It has the hallmark of architecture of typical uh, saint worshiping cathedrals and churches. Uh, does this place seem too perfect to the rest of you? Um, no, it seems awesome. Is this what passes for perfect on the material plane? You didn't taste the pie. <laughs> And I honestly prefer a desert. Right. I mean, uh, it's a little unsettling, I think. Um, but I think a good place to start our search is that church. Oh, yeah. Maybe they have wine. I mean, also, this one's called a fallen saint. Fallen yeah, Saints I kind of see wine. a theme, a theme going on with these liches, galactery locations. Yeah, let's hope it's not that they don't have wine. Um, How many right. old women selling pies? We're going to have to kill them there. <laughs> oh no! What if it's phylactery pie, is a pie? Would you eat it? I mean, technically, that would destroy it. So. I'm going to head to the church. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> right. Weirdly, just as you say, I'm going to head to the church, the bell of the church starts ringing. And that's when everyone continent. begins to put stuff away and begin to go towards the church. This isn't an unnatural occurrence. It would be the, the bell of the cathedral rings all the time because there's multiple masses for multiple saints that are given. But a singular church might only have the bell ring once, if not twice a day, if it's only dedicated to one saint. And the people who needed to go would go. This isn't an unnatural occurrence, but it was almost perfectly timed. Yeah. Oh crap, um, they're gonna drink up all the wine. Guys, hurry. Arthur's going to start running. Uh, they, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <No follow. laughs> yeah, people are crowding into the church. It seems like most of the people in the village are going to this mass, whatever it is. By the time you actually get there, most of the front rows of the pews have been filled up. And it is a typical structure of a um, saint worshiping church. The aisle down the center, the aisle down the side, the place where the altar is up front, and the pews um, on either side of the central aisle. You have your pick of most of the seats in the middle rows and almost all of the back rows. There's back row. no one sitting. <laughs> back row. <laughs> Ugh, Close the door. <laughs> um, I, churches are amazing places to congregate. I don't trust this one. <laughs> mm. Mm. Whatever you say. We can always I, burn it down. I'm always fascinated by how you mortals worship your gods. So impractical. I mean, yeah, but Ain't if they it? have wine, I don't really care. Right, I suppose we just worship by planting flowers around places. Or gutting someone, it's fine. Right, right. It's called a sacrifice. Now that does seem more practical. Uh, so yeah, we'll take a seat in the back. <laughs> okay. So it is a couple of minutes 
after and people are still coming in and filling the rows no one really sits next to you guys but the, a lot of people don't seem to be sitting in the back rows finally it seems like the um the priest comes out he is tall dressed in a white robe a um typical fashion choice for um the saint worshiping church although it is a bit older in style um he has kind of salt and pepper gray hair and he is incredibly handsome almost unnaturally handsome and he begins this sort of mass welcome brothers and sisters today we gather as we always do to profess our loyalty to one another our bond of kin and our promises to protect each other and he begins the service all of you you kind of get the sense of like a sleazy car salesman from him. He has that kind of charisma. You are not quite sure if he believes what he's selling, but he wants you to believe what he's selling. He additionally picks up a silver chalice off of the altar. Um, oftentimes, masses have particular symbols of particular saints that uh, priests might hold throughout um, as if channeling the power of the saints if they need to cast magic during the mass or other such things. Most of you just get that, uh, it's just <laughs> a bit sleazy. Percy, you get something entirely different. Hell yeah. You are unnerved by this guy you get this kind of this guy is evil it's the kind of sense that you get if you watch say a person who runs a dog fighting ring standing up and speaking being the keynote speaker at a conference for the prevention of animal abuse and you know that they run a dog fighting ring, but you know no one else would believe you if you told them. That kind of, this person is evil, but there's nothing I can do about it. Sense just washes off of him. Additionally, that chalice, not a holy object. Definitely not a holy object. You don't need any kind of magic or spell to tell you that thing is awful. And he's just going about doing the mass. And once again, all of the words are correct to this mass. All of the words are carefully chosen. If any other priest were giving this mass, and it is to St. Pelias, but if any other priest were giving this mass, it would be perfectly serviceable. But since it's coming from him, it just all seems wrong. And he Wonderful. continues. And finally, well, brothers and sisters, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining together and reaffirming your bond to one another. Now go forth and be each other's light. We will join together next week for the same thing. Remember, my doors are always open and you are always welcome here. And he kind of gives a short bow and everybody gets up and starts leaving. There is a small, almost um, desk-sized seeming organ that someone begins to play as everyone just begins to file out. 
but he seems to set the chalice down on the altar and go back into whatever room is behind uh, the altar, which would typically be um, a sort of uh, parish or um, place where the priest would actually live in a church of this size in a village. Typically the uh, priest lives in a sort of single if not maybe two or three room home that is behind or apartment that is behind um the altar and can be accessed through a door um but that's typically like small churches like um brother chauncey's church he lives behind it in a small apartment um that's probably what's back there and that's probably where he's gone Cool. Um, Do you guys think there might be wine in the chalice? We need to get, we need to get our hands on that chalice. That something is very wrong here. That man is he he's I, it's hard to explain how I know, but I, he's wrong. He's he's evil. Oh, thank thank both queens for that. Because I was just thinking I've never seen a more fuckable mortal, and it explains. Oh my. Um, okay. Um, <clears throat> no, he, yeah, he, he, I was he, like, he, y'all. He looks exactly like every human I've seen, but there was something <laughs> different about him. <laughs> that, that's something different is that he's a hypocrite. He, he preaches loyalty, but I, behind closed doors, I have no doubt he performs all sort of awful deeds to the people he calls friends. Um, I don't know. It seems perfectly fine to me. No. I don't know. I can't explain how I know, but I know. He's. This is the most heretical church I've ever stepped foot in because of him. Uh -huh. Not to mention, well, they worship St. Pelias, a long since stripped of his title saint. Um, well, maybe they don't know that. And well, it's either not way, like we can just take your word. That chalice so. is an unholy object. It has some sort of powerful magic, and it is not divine. Okay, so there well, maybe isn't it. any wine in it, is what you're saying. If there was, I would not recommend you drink from it. Should I touch it? Damn it! You could give it a try, Arthur. Mm. Should I touch mm. it? We should probably go investigate the chalice. Uh, Should I touch it? <laughs> While you guys do that, can I maybe, like do an ear to the door of the rectory and like see if I hear anything? Should I touch um, it? Yes, Rick, right, right. you touch it. <laughs> you can touch it. So perception check. Yeah, let's do that. Um, Rarick, as you touch this chalice, the metal is ice cold. Like the type of cold where if you put your tongue on it, it would stick. Mm. It is... Oh freezing it's almost burning freezing as you touch this chalice so i only touched it i haven't used the spell to identify it mm -mm. <laughs> okay something really is up so i'll go ahead and identify it let me like look it. at identify to see what it tells me um which i mean kind of gives you a hint right as to but I mean, it's not like you didn't know that already or couldn't. If it is a magic out. item or some other magic imbued object, you learn its properties and how to use them. Whether it requires attunement to use and how many charges it has. You learn if a spell is affecting an item, if the item was created by a spell, or if it's okay. was created by a spell, you learn the spell. Oh, okay. what? Yeah, it, it, it does tell you a lot, uh, but it doesn't tell you everything. Mm -mm. Yeah, as you cast Identify, that's St. Pelias's phylactery. Oh, bingo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is there bingo in this world? No. Um, huzzah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's what we're looking for, right here. Um, That's a phylactery? 
Oh. Yes. All right, so we found it. What next? There wouldn't happen to be a desiccated corpse we can shove it in the heart of and it'll light it on fire nearby, is there? Mm. Probably not. Guys, shh, I'm trying my, to listen. My, <laughs> my spell didn't let me know how, like, didn't tell me how to destroy it. Uh, so give me a perception check, Arthur. 24. 24. Uh, you do hear um, a, a bit of a conversation. Um, let me check something real quick. I need to check what languages something speaks. I somehow, somehow I knew. Do, 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 do. Is it not what I thought it, oh. It's in an entirely different section, that's why. So, so far, yes, you do hear a conversation between this person who identified himself, I would say, during the mass as Father Jean. And do you speak infernal? I do. Great. They're conversing in infernal. You hear Father Jean. So there are four outsiders. This can be a problem. Yes, we hid as well as we could. I don't think they saw us. Well, we'll have to figure out how to get rid of them. But luckily, I don't think they're going to cause much trouble, but we should dispatch of them quickly. Make sure you keep an eye on them and warn me if anything happens. Got it? Yes. Yes. Good. Now get out of here. Guys, move. Move. Out of the church. Go. <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah. Just go. Leave. <laughs> leave the cup. Leave the cup? No, we need the leave cup. The cup and it. go. Leave the fucking cup and I'm go. I'm taking it. I'm taking it. Oh my it. god. I ran. Okay. Are you holding it? Put it on under my it? very... Yeah, I'm gonna put it under my really small cloak. If it's touching your skin, it's burning. It is so cold. Oh, okay. It is burning your skin. <sighs> Never mind. I'm not gonna. Ah, Lark, do your thing with the magic hand. <laughs> magic hand. Mage hand the cup. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it quickly picks up and go. floats along with you. Go oh, out of the church. Okay barge out of the church okay um nearest building like see if there's somewhere we can kind of out of sight there's a stables uh close by that'll do so you charge into the stable there's probably just like a horse in there but there isn't any human or humanoid, as it seems, in there. Um, is there, are we like out of sight inside the stables or is it like an open situation? I would say that one side is open, um, more of as so that the horses can come and go. But if you like ducked into one of the stalls, people walking by probably wouldn't be able to see you. Okay, that's what Jazz and I are going to go for and just sort of hope that the rest of the party gets the idea. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we're following you now. <laughs> okay, good. So, um, and Arthur's going to like kind of shush, shush. So, I overheard the priest, uh, Father Jean, and what appears to be maybe some sort of fiendish servant um, speaking. They, I, I, I apologize for rushing us out of there so quickly, but they 
nowhere here. And the last thing I heard before I rushed us out of the building was Father Jean dispatching his, like I said, presumably no. fiendish servant to keep an eye on us um, and preferably just dispatch with us. So yeah, I figured it was wise to get out of there and leave the cup without, you know, alerting him that we had stolen it. But didn't we steal? Did we steal it or did you put it back? Did you mage hand it with us or did you mage hand it back? Oh, fuck me. Okay. That's (laughs) right right in the middle. So we made like a circle around and we were crouching crouching around it. I didn't just say anything earlier, Arthur. (laughs) I said leave the cup. I could not possibly have been more clear. That's the black tree. Oh my God. Okay, so we don't have very long before they realize that the cup is missing. In fact, they probably already do and now are looking for us. So it is probably in our best interest to get the fuck out of here as quickly as possible. There's magic on it yet. I'm sorry. How do we block it? We don't know how to destroy it. We have to, we have to destroy it. Uh, yeah, we can do that literally anywhere. Well... I'm just the one to come across this information. Uh, well, that's gonna cast Father John probably cast knows. <laughs> I mean, okay. we're trying to destroy it, right? Get to blast it. Go ahead. <laughs> Set it at the other end of the stable and just try to blast it. Oh my gosh. You I blast it? This thing, ping, pang, pong, ping, pang, it you're just blasting it and it's bouncing around like ping pong not a dent awesome should i I like um blow fire at it yes we should probably make as much noise as is physically possible in an open building with a whatever the that thing is looking for us let's let's just just put up a giant sign instead of could everybody make me a perception check please mother h fucker i tried to tell you oh i did good that's a 24 Hmm. uh one second uh 12 or 20 i have jazz 20 uh so rarick and percy uh, Jazz got a 22. And Jasmine. A raven flies into the stall, the, the, um, the stables, and flies up and sits in the rafters. Mm. Um, Shoot it? Uh, it's a, Shoot it! Uh, it's a raven. What, uh, is, that a, is that the serpent? Is that, can it be... It's a, it's a, we're it? in a demi plane. It won't just be a raven. I'd rather not chance it. Can I fire the dragon wing bow? Yes, you may. Actually, I'm going to hunter's mark it and fire the dragon wing bow. Oh, okay. Certainly. Let me flip to the thing. The thing. <laughs> yes. Awesome. That will be a 20 to hit. Oh, yeah, that hits. Okay. I don't remember what dice this is. Hang on. D8, D6, D6. Nope, it's just a bird. Plus 7, 18 damage, unless you need fire separately. I actually uh, don't calculate fire. It's immune to fire. It's immune to fire. Okay. Uh, oh, sh- oh, I, I cleared it. Hang on. So, mm, 16 damage, not including the fire. Wait a minute. Hang on. It's not all fire damage, right? No. No, it's D8 plus D6. Fire. Okay, so 16 total damage. Yeah. You shoot it. And while the fire doesn't do anything, you knock it out of the rafters as the arrow pierces into it it's a raven but when it hits the ground it's a tiny humanoid with uh, bat wings and a tail and tiny little horns and it just lays there dead with the arrow (laughs) 
sticking out of it. You would all probably recognize that. That is an imp. Oh, God. Oh, an imp? That's yeah. Grody. Oh, you killed the little bastard. Congratulations. Uh, thank you, I think. Okay, well, we know where the and number then I just are. push it into a bush. Right, and Kick Father John probably knows that his servant is dead, so now what do we do about the cup, and should we continue talking about it here? I say we go get Father John. Let's get him. Papa mm-hmm. John? Let's trap him, fight him, make him tell us how to destroy the thing. I mean, I honestly don't have any better ideas. So let's go kill a priest. Ooh. Confront him. Do you know how many merit points you get back home if you kill a priest? Okay, well, we'll have to jot that down and remember to mention that. He's not a real real (laughs) priest, isn't he? I mean, I'm sure it'll count either way, but... (laughs) Um, um, he probably knows we're coming because he probably okay. knows that we killed his servant. So just a pinch of, I'm not usually the one to say this, but just a pinch of caution might be wise. But before we go, can I use my breath weapon on this thing? <laughs> By the all cup? means. The cup? Yeah. Sure. Just light the stables on fire. <laughs> It'll Another building burns down around me. Okay. Uh, I will tell you, you breathe a lot of fire pain. on this thing. Nothing. Okay. I would have to imagine that the process of destroying it is a bit more complicated. Like the last one was give it back, give a heart back to its undead mummy like corpse. So. <laughs> It reminds me of a story that yielded seven books. Let's go. Okay, so back to the church then? Yeah, Lark, bring the thing with us. <laughs> you have yeah. mate hand, don't you? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think I don't he really do. Know. I don't think he does. <laughs> um, yeah, per- Percy looks very happy to be going to confront this man. He's probably at the front. <laughs> Are there any high windows on the outside of the church? I like no, the way you think. Not high windows. It is entirely a one-story building with the exception of the bell tower. The bell tower. But there has got to be a staircase up into the bell tower so the bell can be rung. No? I mean, you could fly up and find out. We can both fly up there. Excuse me. <laughs> I'll just, the last time I flew into a different story, you all got nearly <laughs> by me. <clears throat> while okay, I had to fine. break through drywall. So let's just go get this over. Right. <laughs> I'm here to see Percy torture some man. It's kind of entertaining. I thought they were going to make out. He's unjust oh, and unholy, wow. and he has to pay for it. And Thank incredibly you. attractive. All of us, though? That's beside the point. I oh. think that's precisely the point, but that's just me. I have to live vicariously through someone. <laughs> First, he just is angry because there's a priest that's hotter than him. <laughs> <laughs> Percy must get angry a lot. <laughs> oh, ouch. Have you seen Brother Chauncey? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Kill uh, the hot yeah. priest. Why does the cleric uh, get all the action? Okay. Nothing stopping you guys. <laughs> You'd think the panther would be more of a chick magnet, but... <laughs> Oh, that's my secret. I'm not really 15. I'm way illegal. <laughs> I can't stand you. Oh my god. Can we just go in the church? Yeah, well, we go to the church. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as you leave the stables, you do see Father Jean with a mace in his hand. Fucking oh, called it. Walk like almost Terminator walking down the path towards you. 
Um, just <laughs> armed with this mace. Can Percy cast command? Um, let me <laughs> check the command spell. <laughs> um, Call I it. mean, you can certainly try. <laughs> Should have left the cup. Um, oh, portents. Oh, yeah, you didn't roll your portents for today. Okay. That's okay, I guess. Do, 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 do. Huh, interesting. I thought it was a certain effect. Guess it is not. Um, so it's a wisdom saving throw. Yes. You have to be, I'm guessing it'll probably be a pretty easy but the 15. <laughs> okay. Oh. Um, well, he rolled a 16. Damn it. <laughs> and has a plus nine. Well. And advantage. Well. <laughs> oh, my portents won't, my portents won't help. No nope. portents. Per- first he says, drop, and he just does it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just s- continues marching towards you and just give back the cup with the mace. Why? Oh, you mean this <laughs> cup? Mark's gonna <laughs> fly with his mace hand 30 feet up and just put it on top of the thing? Like on the top thing? of the, the bell tower? Thing? Or the stable? Okay, yeah. yeah, put it on top of the stables. Yeah, well, he doesn't have his flying imp anymore, so... <laughs> um, I'm going to check another spell real quick. Oh, he casts great. fireball and kills all of us. <laughs> no, he isn't going to cast fireball. God damn, Colton, that's dark. <laughs> <laughs> I think you all are probably within twenty feet of each other. I would say, right? Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, that sounds likely. Yeah. His eyes turn black. And he roars as insects fly out of his mouth and swarm you all. Oh, that's um, disgusting. And I'm going to need you all to make constitution saving throws, please. Okay, well, I'm good at those. Does he, when he's casting the spell, he's doing it noticeably, right? Yes. I'd like to try to counterspell it. <laughs> Roll it. Let me check, because I think I fucked it up last time I had somebody do it and I thought it was an arcana check but it's a just a spell casting ability check I think it is right if you're in counter spell so I'm looking up counter spell uh-huh okay let me make sure that he doesn't have it nope you attempt to interrupt a creature in the process if the spell is third level or lower it fails and has no effect if it is casting a spell of fourth level or higher Make an ability check. The DC is 10 plus the spell's level. On a success, the creature's spell fails and has no effect. And I'm checking with... Um, am Charisma. I Charisma. Charisma, okay. Okay, so it is... Okay, so I did do that one wrong. Oops. Oh, well, that's fine. Using your spellcasting ability. 15 plus 5 is a 20. Yeah, that would that would counterspell it. The insects come rushing towards you, but you cast counterspell and the insects just die in the air. I feel like mm-hmm. Lark's counterspells are just shadows <laughs> ripping through things. And he's just gonna yawn and be like, nice try, sweetie. Oh my god. <sighs> and then Oh, yeah. Wonderful. He just says, if you won't give the cup back, then I will burn you alive. And he raises his mace and slams the mace into the ground. And the sky rumbles with thunder as this black cloud forms. And falling from the sky are blue meteors. Okay. In a 30-foot radius. (laughs) Uh, everybody needs to make a constitution saving throw as this God. blue fire hails down. And I guess you fly and fly 60 feet backwards. 
uh, you'll have to make the ability, the uh, Constitution saving throw first. Uh, yep. Percy on twenty-two. Um, hang on, I gotta get back to it. Constitution saving throw, in which I am not proficient and have a shitty modifier. Oh dear. Five. Five. Mm. Yep. I got yeah. a turn. I only have I have proficiency in a good modifier. <laughs> oh, hang on. I got a save for jazz too. Oh dear. Yeah. Well, it looks like so baby. far the only person that's passed is Percy. Okay. D- my 16 didn't path. pass. No, your 16 wow. did not Bro. pass. Percy will kill that the sucks. Man. Balls. Oh, jazz <laughs> fucked it up too. She got a well, she rolled a one, so nothing else really matters. Great, great, really great. My baby, my poor baby. <laughs> Just gotta add up the dice. <laughs> Are we still out of initiative, by the way? I would say at this point, you probably should roll initiative. Cool. Okay. Where that dice left? There it is. Oof. <laughs> okay. Almost okay. dropped the thing. Uh, let me actually do some calculator math here because I don't think I'm going to. Um, so, Percy, you take 21 points of radiant damage. Everybody Mother. else takes 41 points of radiant damage. Wow. Okay. Well, Jasmine's HP points are exhausted. She has none. She's down. None left. She's down. Oh, Uh-oh. very down. That wiped out her whole HP in one go. I told Holy. you to leave the fucking cup. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hang on, I gotta do. You said forty-one points. Yes, forty-one points of radiant damage. Jesus also, my Christ. initiative is nine. Okay. Oh, uh, seventeen here. Mark got a 17 on his initiative. Oh, Percy got What did you get on your initiative? Uh, I got a 14. 14. Percy got 19. 19. Wow. Ooh. She's wrong high. Percy's angry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with a 19, Percy, you are right. going first. Okay. Um So Jasmine just went down. Uh, everyone else is looking <laughs> okay-ish. Um, okay-ish is relative. You have a wizard and a sorcerer that just took 41 points of damage. <laughs> You're right. I forgot I took 21. You guys took 41. <laughs> yeah. Um, you guys should just try I to told you to leave something. the goddamn cup. <laughs> what portents um, did you get, Nino? What? What portents did you get, by the way? 13 and 12. Okay. Yep. Neither of those would help. Gross. Cool. Um, I am going to cast... I mean, odds are he'll probably beat my whole person. Um, okay, I'll, 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 I'll be nice. Um, Percy will move towards the front of the group. Um, and uh, I'll cast a bonus action healing word to bring Jasmine back up. Um, and that does what now? Uh, let's look it up. Uh, I will say the blue fire is still burning in a 30 foot radius. Oh, I'm going to move out of that then. <laughs> um, Wait. Uh, was the damage uh, fire damage? No, it was radiant damage. Oh, okay, sorry. I was going to say, I'm immune to fire, supposed to be explosively. Resistant. Not. No, I have both resistance and. You shouldn't have immunity. Um, yeah, I'm going to cast a okay. healing word and she's going to recover uh, eight health. Okay, um, so. Oh, okay, I got it. That would put her at eight. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm, I'm going to move, use my movement to get out of the fire. And 
then I guess I'll just cast uh, a sacred flame on him. And that's a deck saving throw? Uh, yes. That is a 12. Hell yeah. That's 2d8 of damage for him. Oh, it's a four and eight, 12 damage. Oh, actually. As you hit him with this radiant damage and it washes over him, it doesn't do as much damage as you thought it would. All Damn. right. Sir Evil, why are you resistant to radiant damage? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> so next up is Arthur. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, Arthur is extremely distraught <laughs> over poor Jasmine. I'm sure. Um, okay. What are we going to do here? Well, I... Oh. No, I couldn't have because... Okay, yeah, because I couldn't see him. Um, let's... What do I want to do? What do I want to do? What do I want to do? Yeah, I have a feeling that's not going to work out. Okay, so I am going to, um, I guess, back up out of range of this mess going on here as much as I can. I've got a... I've got 30 to work yeah. with. Okay. So I'll just take all of that. Let's just say a backup 30 feet. Mm-hmm. Um, he's still going to be in range for bow. So let's see what I'm going to do. I got to double check my spells because I feel like he is not a standard uh, shoot him in the face type of deal. I you mean, your what? bow is magical, but. Right. But. Let's let's boost that. Uh, we are going to let's try out ensnaring strike. We're gonna upcast that, mm-hmm. and we're gonna fire the dragon wing bow. All right. I'm sorry. Fire I gotta away. Find my dice. Let's do two of those. Oh yes, that is going to be a twenty-eight to hit. Oh yeah, that hits. Fuck yeah. Okay, uh, so strength saving throw, Mm -hmm. and let me roll damage. D8, D6. Plus D6 for sneak. You got a 26 on his strength check. Strength saving throw. Yep, that, uh, that definitely succeeded. Um... Is that what he rolled? He didn't roll a 26. He got <laughs> well, a 26. Yeah, right. I don't know why I even asked that. I was like wondering if maybe one of rare it's important, but they're both pretty high. So um, 13 plus 7, 20 total damage and crap all for my ensnaring strike. All right. You hit him. And the magic causes these vines to burst out, but he just <laughs> swings his mace and rips the vines off. But you have done a good chunk of damage to him as the flames wash over him. It does not have the same effect as radiance. It's excellent. Um, and I am just gonna have Jasmine run the fuck out of there, like to my side. Yes. And that is all she's doing. You know what? Actually, she will, she can ready an action. So let's say she will ready a pounce if the fire dissipates. All right. So that will be her reaction. Yep. And so next up is Lark. If I'm flying, does the, am I in like danger zone of the fire that I need to move out of it or no? I would say yes, the fire, while it is not, the flames are not um, reaching you, you feel this unnatural heat and you get the sense that it's going to continue burning you if you stay in it. Okay. Cause I was gonna say, cause I was already like probably roof high at that point. I'm just gonna fly 
30 feet to the side, I guess, or just fly out of the range of the fire, um, but keep this guy in range of some spells. Mm -hmm. Um, Can I please have a charisma saving throw from this gentleman? Is it a charm effect? It is not a charm effect. Let me double check. No, I'm casting Bane on him. Hot. Okay. Yeah. So... A charisma check. Uh, charisma saving throw. Ooh. 11. He fails. So oh, he is Christ. baned. He is baned, so whenever he makes an attack roll or saving throw, he has to roll a d4 and subtract the number rolled from the attack roll or saving throw. Yes. So from here on out, D- he gets minus d4 to two of the big pertinent things in a fight. Mm-hmm. Is it is it just the next one or is it's it just all of them. it's all of oh, them until the spell sexy. ends? Yeah, as long as I maintain concentration, it's all of them. So right. I'm gonna I'm gonna burn two sorcery points to quicken a mind sliver on him. So can I get an intelligence saving throw? All right. Let me get all of the dice I need. Um intelligence. Oh, well, that just negates it entirely. Um, he gets a 19. He passes. So nothing from there. Shucks. I can still give him his port, my portent, like a 12. I think that would probably be higher than what he actually rolled. Yeah. Just given the Why? result of that roll. Was that with the advantage? He just a big modifier. Oh, he so, a, yeah. never mind. Yeah. Might as well try. Um, but yeah, I'll use two of my sorcery points to quicken that, and that's all I got. Just flying out, right. taking damage, and chilling. All right. So next up is Father Jean. Oh, God. He hefts his mace, and actually, let me see. Also, as he does the fire, vanishes. Oh, I'm going to check something. That will, do you mind if I roll for Jasmine Pounce? Because that will trigger her. Uh, yes, do that. Okay. She is. <laughs> so that is a claw attack. And, ah, crap. Rolled like poop total of 15 which i highly doubt hits no that does not hit well now she's up there right next to him Mm. never mind he's not going to do that Uh, he is going to stride up to you, Percy, with his 40-foot movement speed. Would that and... give Jazz... Nope, she used her reaction. Never mind, go ahead. Right. Yep. Um, and he says, well, mighty brave of you. And he takes his mace and he's going to vroom, vroom, swing at you. Oh, oh, no. So... Uh, that is a 24 to hit. That'll, that'll do it. And yeah. a 19 to hit. That'll also do it. Um, um, can I use my reaction on one of those two hits? Oh, wait. I have to... The first one is now only a 20. Oh no. <laughs> you have to subtract a D4 from each of them. Yeah, I, I just rolled it. I forgot what the second one was, but it's minus one. I think it still hits. 18? Yeah, they both still hit. Yeah. 18. Yeah. Yeah. Um, could I could I use my reaction on one of the attacks though? Yes. I'm gonna cast silvery barbs and force him to re-roll the attack and take the lower roll. All right. <laughs> just gonna Which one would you like to do it on? Um, I guess the 19, I guess. Yeah, I mean, they're both 
uh, neither one's a crit, so it doesn't really matter. I just want to see if I can make Percy take a little less damage. Right. Um, so, but I think I have to do it now before you roll damage. So I'm going to do right. it. Right. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will say, though, that on the flip side, uh, yeah, we'll make him re-roll the 19. Sure. All right. Um, it's now a 14. Okay, and then Minus he has to one. crack the D4. Yay! You saved me. <laughs> Either way, it doesn't hit, yeah. Yeah, it, it doesn't hit now. So you only get hit once. As part of Silvery Barbs, I get to choose a different creature within mm -hmm. 60 feet and give it advantage on its next attack roll, ability check, or saving throw. Um, so I'm going to give it to Percy. Woo! He's <laughs> <laughs> <are> looking right. up. <laughs> Just this fairy snickering fills the air. But for so some you reason, take... Percy, Tricky, tricky Nine fairy. points of bludgeoning damage, and now I gotta gather up a bunch of dice. Great. That's not <laughs> ominous. Oh no, don't gather dice. Oof. And 11 points of radiant damage. Oh, well, that's worse. <laughs> as he um, slams you with this mace as the mace makes contact with you there's a flash of blue light as he hits you cool 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 and that is going to be the end of his turn and then Rarick it is your turn Ooh, okay am I somewhere in the Fire. Oh, the fire field's already gone. The fire field is already gone. All right. Well, let's test drive my fireball. But I want to use a fourth level slot. You fireball? You should yeah. fire fireball with Percy right next to it. <laughs> Please do not. Oh my god. And also, fireball no, is a I'm terrible target spell. You I'm, I'm to low key annoyed. Up little shitlings, not yeah. hit the big boss. <laughs> Fine, magic missile, so it's fourth fourth level magic missile. Ooh, fourth level magic missile. How many is that? Nice choice. So it's one additional above first. So first is four. Seven in total? Seven total. Yeah, so it would be 74, and each one gets a plus one. Yep. And... And he oh, cannot I stop it. He, it. It automatically hits. So just roll the damage. I got my calculator. <clears throat> it's this guy, right? The pyramid? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I feel like I've used this a lot already. I should have known. Four. One. Are you adding plus one to those? I got it. Okay. Three. Thank you. Four, two, mm, that's five, four. One more. Mm -hmm. Four. Wow. All right. So that's seven. Total of 29. 29. Ooh. Ooh. That's a hefty magic missile. Yeah, it is. They're all you... going in space. Yep. He just gets <laughs> pummeled by these bolts that just hammer into him. You have done a really good chunk of damage to this dude. And he just shakes in anger. <sighs> and is that the end of your turn? Um, yes. All right. So it is back up to the top with Percy. Wonderful. Uh, can, can Percy try to see, like you said, he's taking a good chunk of damage. Can Percy try to see how how he's doing? <coughs> um, like get a gauge on if he's close to getting dead. <laughs> I will say he is not at half health. Okay. Yet. Wonderful. You'd probably be able be able to gauge that. All right. Let me. Let's 
Okay. Uh, Percy uh, takes these these hits from him. He's like, is that all you've got? Um, and uh, I'm going to cast Vampiric Touch. On Ooh. Sexy. You get to do that with advantage. Hell yeah. Okay. I got a nat 20 on the second one. <laughs> Yay. Awesome. So full damage, whatever that is, and then roll okay. again. So full damage is 3d6. So that's 18 to begin with. Twenty-one, twenty-six, thirty, thirty points of damage, and I recover half of that. Yes, you do. You reach out and you touch his skin, and instantly these black veins run over him, and his skin begins to pull taut as he just, oh, I will kill you. Give back the cup. You're going to tell me how to destroy that phylactery. Is that the end of your turn? <laughs> um, I don't think wow, any... priests yelling at each other. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't think there's any Ooh. other bonus action. Getting a little sneaky um, over here. <laughs> so uh, that will be all. Mark's just like, oh, don't stop, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so oh, next up is Arthur. Oh my god, okay, sorry. Um, Yofi is busy laughing. Um, <laughs> okay. All right, so let's see here. Let's see. Well, uh, he's pretty fucking good at saving throws, so we're just going to go with trusty standby yeah. and uh, uh, hunters mark him again, and I need to mark down what spell slots I'm out of. And we are going to fire the dragon wing bow. Yeah, you used Hunter's Mark, and then you used Ensnaring Strike, and then you're using yep. Hunter's Mark now. Yeah, I'm down two first level and down one second level. But I'm trying to do it on my... It's not ah, easy. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I don't want I don't want the video to stop if I swipe over to my character sheet on my iPad. Ah, uh, right. Okay, and... Ba -ba -da -da -ba 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 -ba. Yep, okay, so that's just a straight roll, and hell yeah, 28 to hit. Oh yeah, that hits. I'm sure it do. D8, D6, D6. Do you need fire separately? No. 19 total damage. <laughs> You hit him with this arrow that sticks into his flesh and burns it a little bit. And he, uh, <laughs> he is definitely looking pretty hurt at this point. Um, Lark, it is your turn. Uh, yeah, oh, ja I was gonna, Jasmine. no, it's fine. She, she's gonna stay right where she is. Oh, okay. She's not, she, She's not doing shit. She's really badly hurt, and I just want to keep her safe. All right. So that last attack was for my jazz. <laughs> yeah. So Lark, it is your turn. I mean, we've 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 annoyed him a little. We've countered some spells, fucked up a hit. I think it's time Lark dealt some actual damage, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Hit him hard, fairy man. Twenty-two and a fourteen. Uh, 14 does not hit, 22 does. Okay. Eldritch Blast. Uh, that's going to be 11 force damage on that one. 11? Yeah. You slam him with your bolt of night that burns across him again. He's looking pretty injured at this point. Just uh, hey, can I gonna... quicken him another? Yes, you may. <laughs> He's also going to scream out, <laughs> we need him alive! <laughs> you can talk Take to him the down. Dead. I can talk to the dead. Kill yeah, him! Right? <laughs> Take his ass out. Um, so that's a 12 and a 27. The 27 hits, the 12 does not. Yeah. Uh... 
seven force damage. I rolled a two. Gross. Oh. So yeah, you pummel I mean, him with another one. Form. He is looking very hurt. Oh, poor guy. I mean, if you wanted to use your portent, I I don't know what to use a 12 and a 13 on. It, would my modifier <laughs> apply to a portent roll? I, I don't think it technically does. I think it just replaces the result of the physical Yeah, it replaces roll. the result. I thought it replaced the result of everything. I think you still add your stuff, I thought. You still add your stuff. It's just the dice, the result oh, of the dice the that die. replace it. Yep. Okay. So yeah, okay. Uh, here, give, I'll give you my 13. So that is your oh. reaction. And you get a 13 that you get to add your modifier to. So that's a 22. Yes, that hits. Boom. Shakalaka. Bam. Oh, it's just another seven force damage because I rolled a two again. Oof. Yeah, as you... You want my 12? <laughs> you can only give one, sadly. Yeah, as you pommel him with these bolts of night, he definitely looks like he is holding on, but he is raging at this point. And it is his turn. Oh, no. Uh, of course it is. Why is it skipping me? He hefts his mace again and he goes you challenge me an angel i am divine uh, and ripping uh, out of his back Ew. are not wings they are the stubs of wings Bones and then we all laugh kicking uh, out blood and feathers squirting angel. everywhere as they as what was left of once majestic wings rip out of his back. And I mean, there's nothing he can really do aside from just slam Percy again. <laughs> oh, I wish he wouldn't though. <laughs> oh, but I wish he would. <laughs> um, oof. He got a 26 and a 27. That'll do it. I'll remember, oh. gonna, I'm, I will silvery barbs one of the two. <laughs> um, Yay. I'll use my oh, reaction. Did, did he subtract the D4s too? Oh, yeah. Did oh. You subtract? No, I, mean, I did not. Even with the D4. I mean, he got a 20, <laughs> what was it, 26 and 27? Yeah. Right. Even with the D4, that won't work. But I yeah. will use my silvery reaction barb, mate. to silvery mm -hmm. barb one of the two hits. 24. Ooh. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, 22. I mean, I still get to empower someone. So Very true. I'm going to empower Arthur to have advantage on his next attack roll. Sexy. So I'm just going to try and do this all at once. So, um, oh, that is entirely the wrong die for this. So you at first take seven points of bludgeoning damage, 14 points of bludgeoning damage, mm. and now on to the radiant. Oh my. So that's 19 points of radiant damage. Wonderful. Are you um, alive still? Are you okay? Um, I'm guessing probably not. <laughs> I have 45 health right now. 26 points of I radiant think, damage. I think that's more than 45. <laughs> so I'm down. As he just <laughs> hits you with these, with this mace. And once again, as he strikes into you, there's a flash of blue light. Just two swipes and you're down. Please tell me you didn't take more than half your HP past zero. Oh, no, I'm good. <laughs> no, oh, thank God. No. Okay. <laughs> but that is the end of his turn. He's going to stay there as he raises his mace above his head, um, want, looking at down Percy at Percy's lifeless down, body. I'm like, hey, you're, you're, you're a disgrace as I fall down unconscious. <laughs> so, I to get the last word in. 
Yeah. It is your turn as you see Father Jean raising the mace above his head to smash Percy's lifeless body <laughs> as he falls to the ground. And it is your turn. Can, can I do another magic missile third level slot? Yes, you may. Okay. I'll do so six. that'll be six. Yeah. So it's a four. Four, one, one, ooh, oof, one, oh my, four, Jesus, God. I think that's six, so, 21 total. You unleash this array of bolts that just pummel the, this angelic figure and you watch as he uh, uh, he falls to one knee and then collapses oh, and he is dead as he drops to zero hit points oh yes and as he does the scene suddenly shifts from a bucolic village with a beautiful rolling fields and sheep and garlands of flowers to a flaming hellscape filled Jesus. with screaming and crying and wailing. It's basically the village, but now the entire demiplane is on fire. The sky has turned red. And off in the distance, you see a glowing bluish light through the haze of red fog and smoke that is roughly in the shape of the triptych from the altar um also percy's guys... down percy right. wake yeah. up <laughs> has health potions right? i think so i think you, you guys bought health oh potions. i have a high potion yeah you guys bought like so many health potions <laughs> we did <laughs> Yeah. And none of us thought to use them during that entire encounter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use Mage Hand to grab the goblet thing again mm -hmm. off the roof. And be like, Somebody get Percy up. We need to get out of here. I got him. Um, <laughs> okay, hang on. Let me see what I have. I know I have them in here. I haven't put them on my inventory. I don't know how many I have. My notes were all left in my apartment. Uh oh. I, like I have I have three potions of healing. I think that's all I got. And I have one of greater healing. Uh, Any of them will get him on his feet. Yeah. Just, you know. <laughs> that's all that matters. Right okay. <laughs> I'll I'll give him one of the potions of healing, I guess, just kind of like ew and kind of like yeah. pry his mouth open and like <laughs> dump the potion in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you should have put it in your mouth and then put it on his mouth. <laughs> Okay, that's not what we're doing. You done? Um, yeah, you're alive. Great, we gotta go. I don't we remember how many hit points it heals. We, we have to um, that was to ask him with the phylactery. I'll look it up. Yeah, great, cool. All of yeah. that's fine. We gotta go. Mark's got it in a mage hand. He's gonna be like, can you bring back some of that fallen angel with you? Uh, <laughs> is that how I speak with dead works? I need to double check. I mean, you just need the mouth. Cut his so head you off. Take the head. The head. If you, you take the head, it's head. fine. <laughs> yeah, you just need a functioning yeah. head. Percy That's all you need. <laughs> you okay. just need the head. Plus, okay. everyone else already. Everyone else is already carrying something, so I grab the head. Did anybody <laughs> cut it off? It off. <laughs> I think that like, might be up to you, Arthur. <laughs> I, yeah, I think, yeah. I, have, I think I have the only sword. Okay, so you 2d4 plus 2 hit points is what that potion regains. Yeah. So go for that. And do you want me to make a check or something to take off the head? Like a strength check? Yeah, just check make or... me a strength check as you just run up with the sword. And... <laughs> I think you get it with advantage from silvery barbs. I'll look that I mean, up. Oh, yeah! I do still get the I mean, yeah. He's... Okay, well, that's good because the first one was a four. <sighs> oh my god, and the second one was a one. <laughs> I'm tired, okay. Can I just try again? Yeah. 
I'm just going to keep swinging until the head comes off. I mean, the fire is getting worse, but (laughs) yeah, I'll say after probably like three swings, you manage to get it off. Okay. Maybe I can just, I'll take it. Maybe I can just (laughs) burn him from the foot up to the neck and the stomach. I think he'll burn. (laughs) I think the burning will happen regardless of our actions. Um, I got it. I got it. Okay. Just grab the head. We got to go. Okay. (laughs) Then I just grab it and carry it. (laughs) Cool. Yeah, as you are get out an of angel here. feather quick, like real fast. Um, get get the just, wing. Lark's like, grab the wings too. I just am <laughs> gonna like grab just a feather. The bone with a few what feathers kind of on looting it. is this? That's, oh, we'll that's all I have feather. time for. One, one feather. Just yeah, one feather. Just, grab a feather. That's all I want. Out out comes a feather. Cool. Run. <laughs> as you're Where running, you see home. Yeah, you do see off in the distance this basically portal shaped like the triptych um that's kind of this blue haze relatively where you popped out as you charge through these flames the smoke rolling across the landscape the horrible red sky filled with darkening clouds you see people the villagers running towards you, but as they get closer, they suddenly begin to age very quickly until they're just skeletons with thin skin over them and they just collapse into dust. And you continue charging until you reach the portal, running out into a smoke-filled chapel. And you turn and watch the triptych, the paint, The painting on the triptych is no longer this blue sky and green field. It's everything is in shades of red and the paint begins to melt and turn black and drip off of the triptych as patches of it catch fire and the triptych burns and collapses to ash and chunks of wood. And you stand in the chapel with the haze from the incense and the horrible sulfurous smelling smoke of the burnt triptych with the chalice in your hand, well, in Lark's mage hand. (laughs) And as you stand there taking in everything that happened, realizing just how injured you all are, how close you were to losing a party member, we're gonna end that episode there. So we will see you all next week. And I'll see you guys next week as well.